Assalamu alaikum everyone. Inshallah, today we'll start from uh, Surah Al-An'am, the beginning of Surah Al-An'am, Juz 7. Juz 7, the beginning of, of Surah Al-An'am, inshallah. <coughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون هو الذي خلقكم من طين ثم قضى أجلا وأجل مسمى عنده ثم أنتم تمترون وهو الله في السماوات وفي الأرض يعلم سركم وجهركم ويعلم ما تكسبون وما تأتيهم من آية ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين فقد كذبوا بالحق لما جاءهم فسوف يأتيهم أنباء ما كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أجلكنا قبلهم كم أجلكنا من قبلهم من قرن مكناهم في الأرض ما لم نمكن لكم وأرسلنا السماء عليهم مدرارا وجعلنا الأنهار تجري من تحتهم فأهلكناهم بذنوبهم وأنشأنا من بعدهم قرنا آخرين ولو نزلنا عليك كتابا في قرطاس فلمسوه فلمسوه بأيديهم لقال الذين كفروا إن هذا إلا سحر مبين وقالوا لولا أنزل عليه ملك ولو أنزلنا ملكا لقضي الأمر ثم لا ينظرون ولو جعلناه ملكا لجعلناه رجلا ولنبسنا عليهم ما يلبسون ولقد استهزئ برسل من قبلك فحاق بالذين سخروا منهم ما كانوا به يستهزئون قل سيروا في الأرض ثم انظروا كيف كان عاقبة المكذبين قل لمن ما في السماوات والأرض قل لمن في السماوات والأرض قل الله كتب على نفسه الرحمة ليجمعنكم إلى يوم القيامة لا ريب فيه 
الذين خسروا أنفسهم فهم لا يؤمنون وله ما سكن في الليل والنهار وهو السميع العليم قل أغير الله أتخذ وليا فاطر السماوات والأرض وهو يطعم ولا يطعم قل إني أمرت أن أكون أول من أسلم ولا تكونن من المشركين ولا تكونن من المشركين قل إني أخاف إن عصيت ربي عذاب يوم عظيم من يصرف عنه يومئذ فقد رحمه وذلك الفوز المبين وإن يمسسك الله بضر فلا كاشف له إلا هو وإن يمسسك بخير فهو على كل شيء قدير وهو القاهر فوق عباده وهو الحكيم الخبير قل الله شهيد بيني وبينكم وأوحي إلي هذا القرآن وأوحي إلي هذا القرآن لأنذركم به ومن بلغ أئنكم لتشهدون أن مع الله آلهة أخرى قل لا أشهد قل إنما هو إله واحد وإنني بريء مما تشركون الذين آتيناهم الكتاب يعرفونه كما يعرفون أبناءهم الذين خسروا أنفسهم فهم لا يؤمنون ومن أظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا أو كذب بآياته إنه لا يفلح إنه لا يفلح الظالمون ويوم نحشرهم جميعا ويوم نحشرهم جميعا ثم ثم نقول للذين أشركوا أين شركاؤكم أين شركاؤكم الذين كنتم تزعمون ثم لم تكن فتنتهم إلا أن قالوا إلا أن قالوا والله ربنا ما كنا مشركين انظر كيف كذبوا على أنفسهم وضل عنهم ما كانوا يفترون 
وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَسْتَمِعُ إِلَيْكَ وَجَعَلْنَا عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّةً أَنْ يَفْقَهُوا وَفِي آذَانِهِمْ وَقْرًا وَإِنْ يَرَوْا كُلَّ آيَةٍ لَا يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوكَ يُجَادِلُونَكَ يَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يقول الذين كفروا إن هذا إلا أساطير الأولين صدق الله مولانا العلي العظيم Jazakullah Karianus, uh, over to you, Imam Tariq. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So these, these are very beautiful verses that we heard now uh, from Surah Al-An'am. And one of the areas that theology seeks to address is how can we prove the existence of God? And Muslim theologians from the time of the Salaf up until our time, they spent a lot of time trying to argue both rationally, both theologically, uh, philosophically, how do you prove the existence of God? And in these early verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides us with some of these proofs. So first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the discussion in the chapter, and he talks about all of these natural phenomena. He talks about the altering of the night and the day. He talks about the rain. He talks about the earth, the formation of the earth, etc. Basically saying rhetorically, you know, how is all of this happening? How, how, how is all of this in balance? And the words that Allah Ta'ala uses to describe these things are very precise. So for example, in the very opening verse, Allah created the heavens and the earth and then he created in their light and darkness. Dhulumat wa nur. And the deeper that you get into the universe, the darker it is, there's absence of light. And the closer you are to a sun or a star, there's light, etc. Elsewhere in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Yuliju layla fin nahari wa yuliju nahara fil layl. That Allah, it, it, like in music, when there's a crescendo, when there's a loud sound and then it gets softer and then the crescendo increases, this is what the ilaj is. Allah Sa'ala says he, he dissolves the night into the morning and dissolves the morning into the night. Okay, very descriptive words that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala uses. And then he says rhetorically, you know, who, who did all of this? How's all of this? So one area that Muslim scholars looked at in the past for the proof of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the natural phenomena around us. That if we were to reflect on the world around us, we would understand that the world, the matter that makes up the world, upon that matter, there are certain accidents. There are certain things that cause it to change. It can change in size. It can change in shape. It can change in weight. It can change in color. It can change in location. It can change in possession. These are called in the study of philosophy, accidents and ahdath. So therefore that which causes those accidents or those changes on that matter has to be something that is unchanged. And this is essentially what the, you know, the Aristotelian idea of the prime mover, that the world has a prime mover. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about another set of proofs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about history. He says, go, look, study in the past. Look at what happened in the people before you. What happened to them? We gave them worldly power. We gave them wealth. We gave them strength. We gave them empire. We gave them a vast economy. And then where are they today? Because they did not follow these edicts. So another area of proof that the Muslims look at is history itself. And this is something that Allah actually commands several times in the Quran. 
is he tells us to go out and study history. Look at what happened to the people before you. Look what happens when they go against natural laws, when they go against what's fair, what's equitable, what's just, what's merciful to their people. And look at the, the, the destruction that they came to those people. I mean, there was a time in, in human history where you could not fathom there not being something called the Roman Empire. There was a time in human history where you could not fathom a world without the Persian Empire. This was power and wealth beyond any description. It, everything that we have today pales into comparison to that type of power. But yet today it's gone. It's all gone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go look at these things, contemplate these things. And Allah asks these questions, of course, rhetorically. However, Allah also acknowledges as we read further into the surah, that at the end of the day, people that disbelieve are going to disbelieve. That it doesn't matter what you bring them. Allah Ta'ala even says very descriptively, if we were to send down this Qur'an, this message, in a book just like this, that they can, that they can touch, and then they can smell, and then they can taste, even then they'll say, SubhanAllah, that's magic. If you brought them an angel, and you made that angel look like a human, and you had that angel tell them that this is the revelation, that this is the prophet, that this is uh, truth, even then they will disbelieve. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can say, well, why is there this contradiction? Why talk about all of these proofs and then say at the end of the day, people don't believe? To teach us a very important lesson that faith is something that is in the heart and belongs only between the person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala addressing the Prophet والسلام, elsewhere in the Quran, he says, You cannot guide who you want. Allah guides whom you will. You can bring all the proofs you want. It doesn't matter. If Allah does not decree for that person to believe, they are not going to believe. So therefore, belief is not something that is rationally added. You don't add one plus one plus one plus one equals Iman. It doesn't work like that. It's something that is a relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I remember when I was a freshman in college and I was taking philosophy, I had a, a, a professor and he was an atheist. He was a, a diehard atheist and he always made fun of religion and God and things like that. But he had the best akhlaq I have ever seen. He was so courteous. He was so nice. He was so, like we say in Arabic, he was mu'addab, muhaddab. You know, he was a very classy elderly gentleman. And I felt, you know, I'm a you know, teenager, I felt, you know what, I'm going to prove to this guy that God exists. So every class, I bring him books. I brought him the book about his embryology in the Quran. I brought him books about evolution. I brought all of the things. I said, look, look at this verse. Allah says in the, the verse of the Quran, this, and then look at the embryological, you know, state and look at the image. You know, Allah says, mudra. And you look at the, the, the zygote or the embryos, it's growing. It's the exact description. It looks like it's been, and I was like, I'm going to win. And I spent a whole semester with this guy and he didn't, you know, nothing would face him. He would just write off everything because I didn't understand this lesson. I didn't understand that faith is not something that you, you can push. It's not something that you can coerce. It's not something that you can even necessarily prove to somebody, even though Allah Ta'ala tells us these are the proofs if you really want to know scientifically, if you really want to know rationally, if you really want to know historically, these are the proofs that the Qur'an is preserved, that the Sunnah is preserved, that everything, there is no contradictions in the Qur'an, that our system makes sense rationally, theologically, philosophically. It's consistent. Even still, if the person has not been blessed with faith, they will not believe. And therefore, faith is something that we should rejoice and be grateful that we have. Now, of course, faith increases and it decreases. But alhamdulillah, we have it. We have something to latch, latch onto. And therefore, it is a tremendous asset and benefit. In the middle of this discussion, or to conclude that train of thought before I, I wanted to end on a, a, a separate note, but just to conclude that thought, I'll, the verses that we heard <coughs> at the end, verses 22 and 23 and 24, very comical. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what's going to happen to these people in Yawm al-Qiyamah? We're going to bring them because, you know, Yawm al-Qiyamah, there's no, there's no more hiding, right? There's, everything is clear now. Allah ta'ala will say, look at your disbelief. 
And then they'll say, me? I just believed. I, I, what are you talking about? We were the first people to believe. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, انظروا كيف كذبوا على أنفسهم Look how they lie to themselves. وضل عنهم ما كانوا يفترون But they are misguided. They were misguided in this world and they were misguided in the hereafter. In, this, in these three verses, when Allah Ta'ala says this description, there is this subtle message that's very, very important for us to remember. That people that, have, that disbelieve violently, people that attack belief in general, or people that attack religion, or people that attack specifically people like us Muslims or Islam or something like that, you must understand that deep inside them, there is this inconsistency. Because their disbelief is not a disbelief that is based on knowledge. It is a disbelief based on the absence of knowledge. Whereas our system of belief, which is why Allah begins the discussion talking about these uh, scientific proofs, these historical proofs, things for us to contemplate, our system is consistent. If you understand the rules of our system, it's consistent. And these people, they will hide behind, they won't stand up for what they believe in, even when it's too late. They won't say, yeah, you know, I, uh, I was wrong. That's the story of Pharaoh. You know, as the waves were, the ocean was crashing in on Pharaoh, he said, I meant to be Rabbi Moses. I believe now in the, in the God of Moses. And then Allah Ta'ala said, al -an. You know, now it's too late now. Now it's too late. So there is an inconsistency in their thinking, there's an inconsistency in their belief. And our belief system, alhamdulillah, is consistent. And when we understand this consistency is inshallah what, what makes the belief firm. The last thing I want to say uh, in the middle of our discussion in verse 17, a very powerful verse, Allah Ta'ala says, وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِدُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ If any ill or any harm or any calamity shall befall you, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can remove that. And if anything good befalls you, indeed Allah ta'ala is able over all things. This is the creed of Islam. This is what la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah means. That we believe firmly with every fiber of our being that anything that happens to us, Allah ta'ala can remove it. Any, there is no difficulty that is bigger for Allah. There is no, there is no pandemic, there is no crisis, there is no calamity, there is no harm that Allah Ta'ala cannot remove. And therefore there is no benefit that we have, there is no grace that we enjoy, there is no benevolence that we live in, except that it comes from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And if we understand that verse and we live that meaning, if we live this sentiment, this is what, the, what it is to have no fear, to live a life of no fear, of no anxiety, of no concern, knowing that your affair is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as we live in this you know, very you know, peculiar uh, time in, 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 in human history, let us remember that there is nothing that Allah ta'ala can't remove. And that, Allah that the universe is in Allah's hands, not in our hands, alhamdulillah. And therefore, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And with that belief, we will, be, we will live a life of freedom. We will live a life of happiness. We will live a life of ease and we will live a life of contentment, resigning to the fact that everything in this universe happens by the will and the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahu wa liwa lakum wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alam. Anas? Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt. وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت سبحانك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يذل من واليت ولا يعز من عاديت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت فلك الحمد يا الله على ما قضيت ولك الشكر على ما أنعمت به علينا وأوليت نستغفرك يا ربنا من جميع الذنوب والخطايا ونتوب إليك 
ونؤمن بك ونتوكل عليك ونثني عليك الخير كله أنت الغني ونحن الفقراء إليك أنت الوكيل ونحن المتوكلون عليك أنت القوي ونحن الضعفاء إليك أنت العزيز ونحن الأذلاء إليك اللهم استرنا فوق الأرض وتحت الأرض ويوم العرض عليك اللهم أحسن وقوفنا بين يديك ولا تخزنا يوم العرض عليك اللهم أحسن عاقبتنا في الأمور كلها وأجرنا من خزي الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة يا حمناد يا منان يا ذا الجلال والإكرام نسألك يا رحمن أن ترزقنا شفاعته وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفتين شربة ماء لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا اللهم كما آمنا به ولم نره فلا تفرق بيننا وبينه حتى تدخلنا مدخله برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم برحمتك الواسعة عمنا وكفنا شر ما أهمنا وغمنا وعلى الإيمان الكامل والكتاب والسنة جمعا اللهم توفنا اللهم توفنا مؤمنين وأنت راض عنا يا خير الرازقين اللهم إنا نسألك أن ترزقنا حبك وحب من يحبك وحب كل عمل يقربنا إلى حبك وأن تغفر لنا وأن ترحمنا وإذا أردت بقوم فتنة فقبضنا إليك غير مفتونين اللهم اعتق رقابنا ورقاب آبائنا وأولادنا وأزواجنا وأمهاتنا من النار اللهم اعتقنا من النار يا هذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا محمد في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Before I hand it over to uh, Jazakullah Karianas Before I hand it over to uh, Imam Tariq to conclude the dua in English, I wanted to make some announcements briefly, is that each day Anas is reciting the chapters and is getting loaded in the YouTube and it's available in the YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the ICCP YouTube channel. And, and also these khabiras are getting recorded every night. And uh, if you subscribe to the ICCP emails, you should be getting uh, daily email updates with the links and the recordings. Um, and also I want to share a good news. Uh, uh, we know we had a generous donor who wanted to match the contribution uh, through April 20th. And Alhamdulillah, uh, we had um, $39,820 um, deposited by our community. And the donor has matched it. Takbir Allah Akbar. And uh, we have $78,000 deposited through the April 20th program by the donor match. So I wanted to share the good news with the community. Alhamdulillah. So this, this means we, we, can, we can continue to afford our Zoom accounts. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you. We give all praise and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acknowledge His 
kindness and his generosity to us and on our community and on our families. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his praise and love and salutation on the best of humanity, the best ever created Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us in this blessed month of Qur'an, as sweet as the days are and as sweet as the nights are. May we taste the sweetness of faith. May we taste the sweetness of the Qur'an. May we taste the sweetness of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fast in this blessed month, to ex accept our prayers in this blessed month. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ex accept our night vigil in this blessed month. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to heal all those who are wounded and sick in our community. We ask Allah ta'ala to have mercy on all of those who have passed before us and to bestow his love and mercy and protection on our parents and to bestow his love and protection on our children. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our children and to protect the generations after us. May they may the faith grow in their hearts, inshallah. We ask Allah ta'ala to protect our mosque and our community and our county and our state and our nation. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate the suffering that the globe is going through with this pandemic. We ask Allah Ta'ala to give hikmah and wisdom to those in authority over us. May Allah guide them to the right decision, inshallah. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. May we taste the freedom from the hellfire from this blessed month. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to increase our faith, to increase our certainty, to increase our love and our mercy amongst us. And we ask all of this with all of Allah Ta'ala's beautiful names, knowing that he is able over all things. And we conclude by reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina al-Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Sirat al-Ladheen an'amta alayhim. Ghayr al-Maghdubi alayhim. Wa al-Dalim. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salillahum ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Imam Tariq, just one dua request we have uh, for our sister Tina, Tina uh, Mannan. Uh, she's undergoing an operation tomorrow. Please ask dua for all of community members. So we ask uh, specifically for the sister Tina Mannan and her surgery. May Allah Ta'ala make the surgery successful. May she heal and recover. May Allah Ta'ala ease her transition back to her home. And for all of those who are in pain, and who are injured and suffering now, we ask Allah Ta'ala to heal them, inshallah, by uh, in the most express manner, inshallah, alhamdulillahi rabbil alam.